Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful to be able to stand here before you to address the critical issue of human rights, accountability, and impunity. I do so with the encouragement of human rights uh, of the international NGO community. What I want to convey is based on direct involvement of, of, of four decades in human rights in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Iran, and Palestine, including the diaspora communities. What we, as civil society, seek in order to build bridges among people is clear. Whoever commits a crime against his or her own people or people of other countries should, be, should face justice. This is the heart of the United Nations principles of protection and promotion of human rights through action to combat impunity. Who can object to this? The gap between the reality and our aspirations remains so frighteningly huge. The stark reality is that international law has been applied at two levels, one for the powerful and one for the powerless. Human rights and accountability, instead of being applicable to all equally, are subjected to selective implications, implementations. Therefore, some governments have enjoyed impunity, no matter how brutal they have behaved against their or other people. This lethal combination of double standards with the silence of the international community has encouraged and deepened mistrust, extremism, and violence. My country, Iraq, is a classic example of the double standards policy where the occupying forces continued to show a severe disregard and contempt for international law and human rights, and thereby constitutes serious violations of international law and United Nations principles. The destruction caused by the illegal invasion of 2003, the subsequent occupation, and the system that followed, not to forget 13 years of inhumane and unjustified economic sanctions, have had a truly massive and continuing impact on the Iraqi people. As an Iraqi woman, I can assure you that this had deeply, has deeply affected every aspect of our daily life as it has deprived us of our basic human rights. Beside Iraq, there are numerous examples from countries around the world which suffered massive violations of human rights, but all continued without real investigation or trials to the violators. Palestine and Afghanistan are among these countries. Governments may want to forget all this, but most people will not. These possible responsible must not be allowed to escape, but be taken to task and be held accountable. We, of course, are aware of the ongoing debate on the so-called responsibility to protect, but at the same time, we are deeply worried about its implementation or, to put more bluntly, its misuse. It must not be used as a pretext for illegal military interventions. Gracias, señora Andel